So we were discussing that this course is an introductory course. So we will try as much as possible to discuss some of the basic things that you might have come across or you might have seen mining engineers do. But because you are not directly related to that aspect of mining, which is either uh, drilling, blasting, mm, those kind of things, loading and hauling, which are the typical mining activities that mining engineers engulf themselves with. You might not be directly related to things like that, but you might have seen people do them because you work in the mine. And so we just want to familiarize ourselves with some of these basic things that we do in a mine. So mining, as we already have come across, we say that mining is the removal of valuable minerals. So any mineral that is of interest to us, which we think we can mine and make profit. And this valuable mineral could be zinc, it could be iron, it could be lithium, um, it could be gold, it could be diamond, any of these minerals, it could be salt. It could also be industrial rocks and other stuff, granites, which we use for quarry, we get from quarry and other things. So any of these appropriate or valuable minerals that are of certain essence to us, which we intend to mine with the intention that we are going to make some profit out of it, then we call that activity as mining. So the removal of these essential minerals can either be done through surface methods or what underground methods. And sometimes we even do this using both techniques. So if we are going to do mining, we want to extract a mineral of interest to us from the earth. And we can do that using only two kinds of methods. And these are either underground methods or surface mining methods. So, and sometimes we can even use both of these techniques, which a typical examples are some of these mines around us, where you start with surface mines and along the line you switch to underground. Other times you have a section of the mine operating underground and another section of the mine also operating surface. And so we can use both of these techniques to extract our mineral of interest. Then again, we say mining and agriculture have been the two main or basic industries that have led to development. So almost every aspect of life or human life, it's either we are we achieved that activity through mining or that material through mining, or we got it through agriculture. Agriculture is there to help us mm, to get food for ourselves and provide shelter and other stuff. And you realize that some of these basic essential needs of human being or man, definitely we have some of these things come into place. Either through mining, we got those materials or it is through agriculture, we get the food we eat. So we're saying, uh, it says that agriculture provides the requirements of man by giving us clothing and shelter. Whereas mining supplies man with what? Requirements such as structural material. If we are going to build the sand we use, the gravels we are going to use for molding of blocks, the concreting we do, all these activities, structural materials we need, which are the sand, the clays and other stuff are through mining. We get fuels for our car, uh, fuel to uh, more or less help move our en the engines of our cars from one place to another. So it means before we can travel, we need some fuel. And this fuel is gotten through mining, which are in the form of natural gas, coal, or petroleum. Then we have abrasives, abrasives that we use in our daily activities. And then we have in fertilizers. Mm, fertilizers, the minerals that are used for fertilizers are also mined. And that is why this uh, recent Ukraine sort of war that have been going on around, they are the major suppliers of fertilizers to the world. And since they are, they are not at peace, they are unable to mine some of these things that help us which help them to produce more fertilizers for the rest of the world to be able to 
continue with their farming activities. And once they are unable to go for that mining activity, it means fertilizers will be in shortage. And that's how come we are suffering it now. Then we have industrial materials such as sulfur, graphite, and asbestos. Then metal minerals, metal minerals such as the iron, the gold, the silver, the copper. But you know, funny enough, when we talk about mining, especially those of us within the Takwa and its environs or Oboase, as soon as we hear mining, what comes to our mind is about gold. But then when we are talking about mining, all these things we are making mention of are all things we get from mining. So we have the metallic minerals such as the iron, the gold, the silver, the copper, the lead, the zinc, the aluminum. Then we also have precious minerals such as diamond and sapphire. These are some of those special gems we put on rings. Then we have the availability of these minerals has also greatly brought about growth of the arts, sciences, and industry, which is a fact. In some development of the present day high tech, so this one is also trying to give us a brief history of how mining started. And that one I will entreat you to go and read for your own understanding and knowledge. So mining in Ghana. So mining activities in Ghana dates back many centuries so mining started long ago when people used to just can go to the stream and fetch sand or any material and kind of try to pan the substance like how the galamseyers do and at the end of the day they are able to come up with their mineral of interest as easy as that but today because we do not have such alluvial materials in abundance around us we Hardly do we even find gold nuggets these days. Mining, heavy mining companies are even struggling to find gold nuggets. And so how much more you just see in some along the streets. And so it's difficult. Mm. And so that is how uh, mining has been. So mining has been there, time immemorial. Then we have the common minerals worked in those times where those used used for making implements of what farming hunting so we are saying that those days when we were to mine the things we were interested in were to just mine and get things like iron and copper which will help us get our farm implements and then help us to hunt for food and then farm in order to also get food good and then when we get some of these elements we trade them for gold, diamond, and other precious stones. So gold was transported from Ghana, the then gold coast across the Sahara Desert. So when we have gotten these gold, we have gone in for, we trade them to other people of other continents for money or for some of these farm implements I've made mention of. So mining in Ghana, the minerals of economic value that contributes to be mined, uh, that continue to be mined and explored in Ghana, exploited in Ghana include gold. So today, if we are talking about mining, we are able to get slate, granite, marble stones. Marble stones, I think we have some uh, in Efwanta around here. So in fact, our land is rich. Uh, so some of these things, all of these minerals we have, we are making mention of here can also be found in Ghana, but some of them are not, have not yet been fully exploited, just like our, uh, geologists will say the exploitation have not gone into detail and so we don't have a uh, good knowledge mm, the proven knowledge of some of these minerals then others of economic value but which are not being commercially exploited so some of the things we have the minerals we have got in the country which are not looked at it critically to find out whether they are of economic value or they are in quantities that can be mined at a profit. Some of them are titanium, graphite, lithium, feldspar, white mica, and the rest. Then several large-scale mines have been opened for the exploitation of some of these minerals. What are some of these companies? We have for gold mining, we can make mention of Asanko Gold. We have uh, Anglo Gold, Ashanti, Golden Star Resources, Wasa Mine, Islands. Of late, I learned it has, uh, it has changed ownership or sort of. So for gold mining, we have Gold Fields Ghana Limited. We have Gold Fields Ghana Limited, the Diamond and Tapa. 
We have Anglo Gold Ashanti, Idua Prim, and Obuase. Then we have Golden Star, Wasa Mine, and then Pristia here, which used to be, I don't know if they, they still operate under this name. Then for di diamonds, we used to have the Ghana Consolidated Diamonds. For bauxite, what we have, for bauxite, we have the Ghana Bauxite Company Limited. And manganese, we have the Ghana Manganese Company Limited at Misuta. So the above are the major mining companies that produce mm, by surface and underground mining methods. So some of these mining companies we have made mention of, they operate either by surface or by underground, which we made mention that if we want to mine, we only have two approaches we can attack our mineral of interest, either by surface or by underground mining methods. Or, so, and it says that, there are, however, several small-scale mining operate, operating establishments, mining for gold, diamonds, and other. So what we are trying to say is that despite the fact that we have made mention of these big, big companies, which, are, which operate large, on a large scale, we also have small-scale mining companies around that also mine some of these precious minerals we have made mention of. So we also have small-scale mining companies that also operates in this manner. There are several quarries for producing granite and other rock types. So usually when we make mention of mining, just like I stated earlier, all we think about is that uh, is gold. But we need to understand from today that when we talk of these quarries around or along the Takradi Cape Coast Road, they are also into mining because the only difference between mining and quarry is that for quarry their work or their activities ends at crashing where they crash the rock they have mined into smaller sizes that their clients will request for others also cut them into shapes that may be used for other design purposes but then when we come to the usual mining that we know, which is the gold fields and other mining companies that mine for precious minerals. Their activities go beyond crushing. After they have finished mining, they have to go and crush. After crushing, they will mill, and then the mineral process, processing engineers will continue from there and help us extract the mineral of interest or that precious mineral we are interested in. But then quarry, we end at crashes. We crush the mineral or the rock of interest into sizes that may be demanded by the market. And we end it there. So there are several quarries for producing granite and rock types of building and construction industries. So these are the main purpose of these quarries around us. And they also produce minerals such as the ceramics, which we use for the ceramic bowls and cups that we have around, which are the marks. 